Welcome, welcome to this amazing webinar, How to Grow Your Business with Limited Time from Scratch. I'm your host, Christine McAllister, and I'm thrilled that you've joined me today live or that you're watching the replay for what is going to be a powerful and super informative webinar. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear who's on. So go ahead and say hello in the chat box and let me know that you can hear me okay. Let me know you can see me okay. Tell me where you are joining me from in the world. I can see we've got people from all over the place and I'd love to know where you're from. So, and I'd love to welcome you personally. So take a minute to say hello in the chat box there. And we are going to get started here. Let's see, we've got Rachel in Utah. Hi, Rachel, welcome. I spent a month in Utah for the 2002 uh, Olympic Games and loved it. I lived in Sandy and commuted into the city and worked on short track speed skating and figure skating. Um, it was a beautiful, beautiful city, beautiful state. Denver, Colorado. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome, Jane. Hey, Sarah. Oh, you stayed up late from Australia. Amazing. Amanda. Hi from Texas. Where's Angleton? I spent two years in Waco in grad school. Love Texas. Still get down there quite a bit. Have some dear friends down there. Uh, my horses are from Texas. South of Houston. Very, very cool. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Heather. From Morocco? Seriously? Oh, I'd love to visit there. Oh my gosh. How beautiful. How exciting. Great to have you too. So like I said, we have people from all over the world, every corner. I'm so excited. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Well, you are here for the webinar, How to Grow Your Business with Limited Time from Scratch. And I'm so excited to have each and every one of you here. This webinar is really a continuation, kind of a part two of a webinar I did recently called How I Quit My 9 to 5 and Replace My Income in the First Month. If you happened to miss that replay, I'm going to put a link for it in the comments um, so you can grab it. If you haven't seen it, hey, Marilyn. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, I love this. If you haven't seen that webinar, I am going to highly recommend that you grab it. Grab the replay because it is very powerful and you're going to want to you're going to want to have all of the information. Make sure that you um, that you're not missing anything that you got. And it's totally free. And so this is why um, this is why I, I structured these the way that I did. So I'm pulling up that link for you. I'm gonna put it right here in the comments. All right, so you can grab that, you can register for it, you can watch it. Um, and I want you to have all the possible information that you can in order to be able to move you closer to quitting that job in order to be able to move you closer to um, growing that business as fast as you can. Now, I'd like to know, are all of you still in nine to fives or are some of you just find that your time is limited and you want to grow your business as fast as possible? I know my time's a little limited right now because I have a five week old. <laughs> so I know the importance of efficiency. Um, she is hanging out with her dad this morning, daddy daughter time. Um, I see, Amanda, you say you're in a nine to five. Okay, cool. How about the rest of you? Nine to five or just growing your business as you can? All right, stay at home mom. So you definitely have limited time as well, Rachel. For sure, for sure. Cool, so we've got a mix here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I am gonna tell you a little bit about where we're going today. This is going to be very full of content and very interactive. I was for years a professor at the university level, undergraduate and graduate. I love to teach. So giving you this information is truly a pleasure for me. You can tell I love it. 
I'm here for you. So as we go along, please feel free to comment in the chat box. Jot down your questions as they come up and I will stay at the end as long as you have questions. I will stay and answer them. That is my commitment to you. I wanna make sure that you get the support that you need today. I'm here for you. Jot down those questions so that, and we'll have time for them at the end so that we stay on track and I get through all of this amazing information and I'm happy to go back and go into more detail on anything that you want to know. Cool? So this webinar is for you if you are working in a full-time job or doing something else that you feel like is holding you back from spending the time you desire on the business that you love or that you desire to build. You know you were meant for more than a regular job or just scraping by, but you haven't been able to figure out how to make it happen yet. Maybe you struggle with perfectionism procrastination. Chances are, if you're here, you're a high achiever, you're a go-getter. Maybe you're one of those people who just, you know, won every award and recognition in high school. Uh, people always thought, you know, you're the most likely to succeed kind of person. And yet you've struggled <clears throat> without, you know, that clear structure that you had in high school and college. Or you always had these big dreams, but then you took a you know, you took a different path because it was what was in front of you in terms of uh, getting a real job, right? I know that was the case for me. Maybe you're feeling confused, scattered, overwhelmed about what to do next or how to do it. But overall, you know that you really, really want to do it. You really, really want to make this work. You really want to make your business work or the business that you haven't started yet, but that you're dreaming of starting. Let's see. Okay. Marilyn says, I'm at a 6.30 to 3 o'clock. Oh my gosh, yes, you've got, the, you've got the flexible shift there. And Amanda is limited on weekends because she has an 11-month-old. All right, okay. All right, very, very, <laughs> very important then that you learn how to build your business with limited time. So <clears throat> if you're in that job, then you're dreaming of quitting, but maybe you just can't see the path you find yourself frustrated, wondering what you're doing wrong. <clears throat> I want to check real quick and just make sure everybody can hear me okay. Can you let me know if you're having any trouble hearing me? I want to make sure that this is working for you. All right. Sarah says loud and clear all the way in Australia. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> This is for you if you've just, if you've been dealing with self-doubt, if you've been dealing with fear, if you've been dealing with the frustration of wondering what you're doing wrong, maybe you get discouraged, you get anxious, sometimes you might even feel depressed. Maybe you feel like, why does no one want to buy what I'm selling? Or there are already too many people out there doing it for me to be a success. Or I'm starting too late. Or... This person's doing it better than me, or they have this, or they have this. Okay? If you're feeling unsure, unclear, doubting, any of those things, I am here for you. If you're dealing with fear or feeling overwhelmed, I'm here for you. You're in the right place. Today, I'm going to be giving you motivation. I'm going to be helping you to focus, and I'm going to be giving you clear, practical steps you can take for yourself that will apply to any business. Okay. Whatever business you're in, whatever you're desiring to start, that is something I can help you with and you can apply it. And so I want to invite you to get a piece of paper and a, a pen or grab your journal. I recommend handwriting these things because it helps our brain to remember them better so that you can take some notes today, so that you can be fully present in this space. If you've got a million browser tabs open, like I know I'm tempted to do, I invite you to close those and to really focus because this information is a condensation of what I've learned over the last 11 years of running my own businesses, of what I've learned as a professor, of what I've learned as a career counselor, of what I've learned through a lot of trial and error and through hiring some amazing private mentors, some of the best in the world, 
and I'm excited to share it with you today. And I want you to get the most out of it that you can. So here's where we're going today. I'm going to share with you the exact tasks I accomplished each day to grow my business. I'm going to share with you the best order to set up the systems and structures of your business. I'm also going to talk about what I could have done differently to quit much faster. And I'm going to talk about what key tasks to make sure not to waste your time on in this particular stage of your business, where you are growing your business with limited time from scratch. You're in a very particular stage, and that means there are very particular tasks that are, be, that are most efficient for you to do and other ones that are going to waste your time and keep you stuck. So I want to draw that distinction for you, and I also want to help you avoid some of the pitfalls and the mistakes that I have made and that I see other people making. Cool? Great. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Christine McAllister. I'm the founder of Life with Passion. I've been an entrepreneur for 11 years, and I have helped clients in totally varied industries generate multiple six figures in sales as an online marketing expert. As you've heard, I have also built two businesses from scratch to six figures and started those businesses while I was still in my nine to five job, which I hated and which drained the life out of me and which was awful and which honestly, you know, there were days that I wanted to um, get in an accident or drive my car off the road so that I wouldn't have to go to work. So I have felt that pain but I couldn't see the way out for years. And I stayed in that job for years. Unlike a lot of people who you might hear from out there, my first business was not as a coach. I started three businesses before I started Life with Passion. I started Life with Passion to teach others how I started those businesses. So I'm a little unique in that way. A lot of times, you know, I hear from people who the only business they've ever run is as a coach. And so the only business they know how to teach people to do is to be a coach. But that's not me. I do know how to build and run a coaching business, but I also know how to build and run businesses in other industries. And so my clients run the gamut. I, I'm not just a coach teaching other people how to coach, although some of my incredible clients are amazing coaches. But if you do something else, this is still for you. I want to make that clear. If you are a coach or you're dreaming of becoming a coach, this is very much for you because of all these businesses that I've run, these successful businesses, you know, this teaching other people how to run whatever business they desire is truly my calling. As I mentioned to you, I've always been an overachiever, a go-getter, but I got stuck and lost after school. There were years where I thought, I think that maybe I peaked in high school. I thought the only way to go was just to get a real job. As I mentioned, I've been a professor, a career counselor, and I always knew my real passion was to help other women get the freedom of time and schedule and to travel and do what you love like I have. But I spent several years feeling unsettled and frustrated and wondering what was wrong with me that I wasn't happy. I would look around at my other you know, colleagues who seemed to be content in a nine to five and really struggle feeling like I'm not happy, but maybe I should be, right? I finally quit my job. And if you want to hear the whole story of that, go grab the replay of how I quit my nine to five. I went into a lot of detail on that. When I finally quit my job, I started, I've started four businesses and found my calling and flexibility and freedom and created a life I wanted to live. I took the leap to teaching others how to do this and started life with passion last year. And if you're new to me, you may not know that my full story includes the full-term loss of my first daughter, Maeve Evelyn. She passed away in an unexplained stillbirth early in 2015. And her loss really catapulted me into getting fierce and clear about doing what it was that I loved and creating a legacy both for her and for myself that was gonna make a difference in the world. So in the last year, I've stopped waiting for the life of my dreams and waiting for retirement to create it. And I've created it now. 
My husband and I moved into our dream house. We took a two week trip to Europe. I tripled my income and I've gotten very, very clear on my purpose. And I'm using that to change the world. And now I take all my skills, my experience, my energy to help high achieving, driven, motivated women who know they're meant for more like I did, but are feeling stuck to quickly build a business out of their unique passions and skills because we all have them to help you find and serve your perfect clients, to use your innate gifts so that you can leave your nine to five without a drop in income like I did. I replaced my income in the first month when I quit my nine to five. So I know it can be done and I can show you a how. And though I get really, really excited and pumped up because I love to teach, I'm actually an introvert. So, you know, I love quiet time. I love me time. And I'm not just one of those people who is full of endless energy for networking and doing all of those kinds of things. What I love about businesses online is that we can be our fully authentic selves and we can also be introverts. Okay. So that's me in a nutshell, Christine McAllister, the founder of Life with Passion. I help you to succeed. I help you strategize around what is best to focus on in your business. You could call me a focus strategist for high achievers. And I am excited to share this information with you today. So let's do this. Okay. Be sure to jot down your questions as they come up. All right. And I will answer them. The first thing I want to share with you about how to grow your business with limited time from scratch is the exact tasks I accomplished each day to grow my business when I had limited time, when I was still in my nine to five, when I was starting out. All right. This will work no matter what business you're in. Number one, the exact task I accomplished. I took time, and this is a task, I took time to focus, okay? I did not work on my business and growing my business unless I was focused. It was not a matter of throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall and seeing what stuck. When I was still in my full-time job and I was commuting an hour and a half round trip in heavy traffic and I was depressed and anxious and frustrated and doubting, there wasn't a lot of time to just do a bunch of research and, you know, think about which direction I wanted to go. I had to be focused, right? Or this wasn't gonna work. And so here is what I did when it came to focus. The first thing I did is that I focused on the end goal. Why was I doing this? Why was I doing this? When you're building your business with limited time, whether it's because you're in a full-time job or you've got full-time responsibilities at home, you have to really want it, right? You have to really want this business to work. You have to have a very strong reason because you know that you only have a certain number of hours in the day. We all have the exact same number of hours. And so you've got to be laser focused. You don't have all day just to get on the internet and research and try to piece together all these free things that people are putting out there and figure out what's best for you. You've got to know what's working and you've got to do it and do it on repeat. So you've got to be connected to why you're doing this. First and foremost, focus. That's the first task. All right. You can ask yourself this question. What becomes available to me when this business works? What becomes available to me when this business works? What became available to me when my business worked? was that I was going to be able to quit my job, number one, first and foremost. I was going to be able to quit my job and have freedom of income and have freedom to travel. I love to travel. I've traveled around the world. I was going to have the freedom to live my dream on my own terms. I'd wanted to run my own business since I was young. I just didn't have the path. And I 
wanted to be able to work when I wanted to work. I wanted to work how I wanted to work, wearing what I wanted to work. I wanted to be able to work without a commute. I wanted to know that how hard I worked was directly responsible for my success. I was in a job where no matter how much I worked or didn't work, I wasn't going to get a raise. So my motivation to succeed was gone. I wanted to know that my success was directly related to how hard I worked because I knew I could work hard if it was something I cared about and something I felt motivated to do. So those are some of the things that became available to me. Another thing that became available to me is that I could spend time with my horses. So having a horse was a lifelong dream of mine that came true when I finally became an adult. And I wanted to spend time with my very first horse. I wanted to hang out with him. I didn't want to go to work when it was dark and go home when it was dark and never get to see him. I wanted to be able to show him and ride him and take lessons and not feel like I was just scraping by to make sure that I, he was fed. So I wanted to spend time with my horse as well. So number one is to keep yourself motivated by focusing on the end goal. What becomes available to you when you get success in your business? Pump yourself up this way. This is key. Because sometimes, you know, you're going to feel like working on your business and sometimes you're not. But if you start with this, then it opens up the possibilities for you. And that thing you've been procrastinating on suddenly becomes easier to spend just five minutes on because you know it's moving you closer to what becomes available to you. Make sense? Cool. All right. In terms of the nitty nitty gritty of like tasks, what did I actually do in front of the computer? Every day I checked my emails as they related to my business. Every day I checked my emails as they related to my side business. All right. I made sure that people got a prompt response. That's probably an easy one. You probably check your emails a lot. Emails also included outreach and follow up to people who might become my customers. Building relationships. This is one of the things connecting that I really enjoy because that's natural for me. I'm a connector. And, you know, when I was starting my business, I was creating my very first business was creating websites for people who owned horses. And so we always had something in common to talk about. As I talked about in the first webinar, I started with what I knew. I started with what I knew, which was horses. And I knew enough about websites, even though I wasn't a coder and I wasn't a designer. So it sounds kind of crazy. I knew enough to get things done for people in the way that they needed. And I used my strengths as a writer and as a project manager to be dependable. And so emails was one of the ways that I communicated that I was dependable. But I also found that emails were a really great way for me as an introvert to follow up with people and nurture a relationship. None of my clients were in person. None of them, not a single one. And so no matter where you are in the world, Australia, Morocco, Utah, Texas, wherever, you can work with people all over the world just like I have from the beginning. And this is 11 years ago. So we have gotten a lot more options for working remotely. So be encouraged there. There's plenty of business out there for you. More, more, more than enough. So emails and outreach and follow up to very targeted people. Okay. I worked on one to two projects at a time, utilizing one to two key skills that I had. That's it. That's that third task. In a way, putting blinders on is really key here. Okay. It is really key because you have got to, like I said, you've got to focus. That applies to both why you're doing this and also what you're doing. Because getting momentum in one area is going to serve you so much better than starting a bunch of things at once. And then, you know, looking up and wondering why none of them is taking off. All right. The next task that I did is that I tracked my time. I tracked my time. There are some great free time trackers out there. Toggle 
Dot-com is one of them, T-O-G-G-L dot com. I use FreshBooks for my invoicing, and it also has a time tracker in it. It does have a free option, so you could look into that. Tracking your time creates a level of daily accountability for you. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later, but track your time. Track your time to figure out what tasks you're spending the most time on. Track your time to make yourself accountable to how you're spending that limited time that you have. Track your time. Track your time. The last task that I'm going to mention is that I showed up. I showed up consistently. I showed up every day. It was a lot of years before I gave myself permission to take a day off in my business. Now, I can't necessarily recommend that because we get tired and we get burnt out. But I showed up every day. So even now, you know, I show up five or six days a week in my business. And that makes such a huge difference for getting traction, for gaining momentum. And so even if you only have 15 minutes in a day, you show up. You show up. What you focus on expands. And so if you want to grow your business and expand it, you've got to focus on it. You've got to show up consistently. So let's review those exact tasks that I accomplished every day to grow my business. Number one is that I focused. I chose to focus on my end goal and what became available to me when I got it. Why was I doing this? Number two, I checked my emails and I responded every day. Number three, I did outreach and follow-up to very targeted people using email. Number four, I worked on one to two projects at a time, utilizing one to two key skills at a time, and that's it. Number five, I tracked my time. I tracked my time. And number six, I showed up consistently. I showed up consistently. Now, remember, if you've got any questions, please write them down for me so that I can come back and answer them for you, okay? Next, the best order to set up the systems and structures of your business. The best order to set up the systems and structures of your business, this is where I see a lot of women making a huge mistake, doing things in the wrong order, okay? I want to help you stay focused on the right things. Now, wherever you are in your journey, wherever you are today, don't beat yourself up about if you've made mistakes. Everything that you've done up to now has, has, has a use in the future, okay? Has a use today, has a use in the future. So no matter where you are, you can start today fresh. That's a great thing. All things are new today. Number one, the best order to set up the systems and structures of your business. Num first is that I recommend you do some outreach, like I mentioned in the last section, to your warm market. Very targeted, people who already know who you are. If you don't know exactly who you wanna work with, you do not need to be spending money on advertising. You need to know specifically who you work with and do some market research and reach out to people who could become your customers. Listen, I know exactly who I work with now, the high achieving, motivated go-getter who's stuck and who's ready to live the life of her dreams. You know, very competent, very capable person who's just wondering what she's doing wrong, right? I can tell right away if someone is a good fit for me, often from the very first email I receive from them. You do not need to have that conversation in person, like I mentioned, to tell if someone's a good fit. I have very strong intuition. And my one of my, probably my biggest superpower is to help women unveil the truth of really who they truly are and to help them create a business around who they truly are, who they were created to be, who they were meant to be. And so I recommend that you get very specific about who you want to work with 
and you out you reach out to them first before you ever start you know casting a wide net it can be very very small you don't need very many clients if you're putting out high-end offers like we talked about in the last webinar you don't need very many clients to build that business fast and then have the money to delegate and to be able to expand but right now we're staying laser focused and reaching out to our warm market, people who already know who we are. That's what's first, okay? Then follow up and follow up. Build relationships. Here's a key for you. If you've never heard this, write it down. If you've heard it, write it down. The fortune is in the follow up. The fortune is in the follow up. People are busy. People get a lot of things thrown at them. If you are the right person for them and your services are what they need, then your responsibility is to show them how you can serve them and support them. I am all about creating a business of service, right? This is why I do so many things for free, give away so much information, show up, run a Facebook group, which if you're not in, you need to get in. It's amazing. Life with Passion Society. Give away a lot of free information and tips because I truly believe I'm here to serve. And so when I believe someone's a good fit, maybe they're scared. Maybe they're freaked out. Maybe they've been burned. My job is to show them that I'm trustworthy, that there's an opportunity for me to help them change their life. I follow up. The fortune is in the follow up. So number one, reach out to your warm market. Number two, follow up with people. Number three, after this, Set up your invoicing and your project management when you need them. You do not need these until you need these. A lot of times what I see women doing is spending a lot of time either because they're nervous or because it seems like the right thing to do because, you know, you maybe have never started a business before. So you think you need to set up a website and do all your invoicing and your project management and get your contracts together and do all of that before you start reaching out, I disagree. My goal for you is that I would rather have you scrambling because someone's going, oh my gosh, I want to work with you. I'm so ready. Where's your contract? Where's your invoicing? And you go, okay, now's the right time to do this. As opposed to setting it up, spending all this time, and then finding out you need to tweak some things because what your market actually needs is different. And you spent all this time developing and setting up these systems and structures. Now you got to go back and redo them. I want you building relationships, connecting, following up first, okay? And then setting up your invoicing, your project management, those types of things. Later is your, is your market that's broader, okay? Your website, your social media, your branding, your marketing. And this stuff, you could set up a website in a day. To be totally honest with you, you could set up a one-page one, web, one page website in an hour or two. It's so easy now, nowadays. Your branding, your social media, all of those things. I want you to write this down too. Done is better than perfect. This stuff comes when you know what you have to offer and you know who you're talking to because that informs the way you set up your website, your branding, your social media, how you talk. Get to know who you're talking to first. Reach out to them. Build relationships. I have had clients sell packages without a website. It's not unusual. You don't need that stuff until you need it. And I want you connected to people and following up first, okay? That's the order. So first, outreach to your warm market. Second, follow up, follow up, follow up. Then set up your invoicing, your project management, and then your marketing to the wider audience. All right? That's the best order that I recommend. Next, next. What I could have done differently to quit much faster OK, I spent a lot of years in a job that I hated because I couldn't see the path. I was terrified to quit. And I let that keep me stuck. As you know now, once I finally quit, I replaced my income in the first month. What the heck was I waiting for? Hold on, I'm going to get a drink of tea here. I'm going to give you a chance to do the same because I know I can talk a little fast and I want to make sure that you have a chance to absorb this information. Okay. 
take a deep breath, breath with me, what I could have done differently to quit much faster than I did. My goal for you is to avoid the mistakes that I have made and that I see a lot of other people making. And so my goal for you is to avoid the biggest reason that nine of 10 businesses fail, right? The biggest reason that so many times when people in our lives talk, hear what we're planning to do, they say, oh, that's not a good idea. Oh, that sounds risky. Having a real job is, is the safe choice. You shouldn't do that. Try to talk you out of it, right? They try to keep you safe because that's what they know. Because it's true that statistically nine out of 10 businesses fail. Why is that? I want to talk about why that is, and I want to talk about how you avoid what Rick Hornbeck calls the Bermuda Triangle of entrepreneurship. This is the reason that nine out of 10 businesses fail. There are two things. If I can help you avoid these, you're going to stay out of that Bermuda Triangle. You are going to be successful. Number one, reason people get stuck. Number one, what I could have done to quit much faster. These two things go together. People don't get strategic help. Number two, people don't delegate. Those are the two reasons nine of 10 businesses fail. 90%. Those are the two reasons. People don't get strategic help and they don't delegate. So what I could have done differently to quit much faster, number one, if I had to go back and do it all over again, 11 years ago, I would have invested time and money in getting high level support and accountability. I had a free mentor and he was awesome and he still is awesome. He's a great friend to this day, but he didn't charge me. We met once a month. He was really encouraging and nice, but honestly that didn't cut it. It was some level of accountability, but I needed someone to not only encourage me, but to challenge me, hold my feet to the fire, call me out when I was playing small, call me out when I was hiding out out of fear. Show me the direct path out of my job, right? I needed someone to challenge me and show me exactly how to do it. And honestly, I needed someone that I would take more seriously because I had paid and invested. Napoleon Hill in the classic book, Think and Grow Rich, if you haven't read it, read it, says, we as humans, there's something about us. We value what we pay for. We value what we pay for. There's an extra level of accountability and of having to make it work and of taking it seriously when we pay for something. We value it more. It's just human nature. So I wasn't paying my mentor. So while I really appreciated his help, I could have gotten there a lot faster if I was paying him. I would have taken his advice more seriously. That's just the honest truth. So if I had gotten high level accountability and support from somebody who'd done it, from somebody who'd quit that job and who was growing and skyrocketing a business, I would have quit much, much, much faster, a thousand percent. The second thing is that I... If I had gotten help and had delegated, I would have quit much faster. All right. This may not be where you are right now in terms of hiring out your weaknesses, but it needs to be on your radar for as soon as you can afford to. Sarah Blakely, the youngest female self-made billionaire ever. Does anybody know what she started, Sarah Blakely? Youngest female self-made billionaire ever. Type it in the comments if you know what she started to become that billionaire. She said her best advice was to hire out your weaknesses as soon as you can afford to. Now, if you can't afford to today, that's okay. You are learning all the pieces of your business, and that's going to make you a better hirer and delegator when you get there. But as soon as you can, do it. Okay, Sarah Blakely. Yes, Rachel, she's the Spanx girl. Good job. She is a Spanx girl. Girlfriend started Spanx and became the youngest self-made female billionaire ever. Spanx. But 
We know what Spanx is and we love our Spanx, right? She, she, that's her best advice, boiled down. Hire out your weaknesses as soon as you can afford to, okay? So that's number two. After you get that support, you get help to delegate. And sometimes we need help to get help. I know I did because a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we hold on to our business. It's got to be perfect, right? And we can do it better than anyone else because it's our baby and no one cares as much as we do. Oh my gosh, getting support has changed everything for me. It's kept me, it's allowed me to not be tied to my computer 24 seven. It's allowed me to be more present in my life. Um, and it's allowed me to grow my businesses a lot faster. I would have quit my job much, much faster if I'd done those two things. Oh, getting a call. Sorry about that. If I had gotten high level support and accountability, and if I had gotten help and I delegated. Okay. All right. We are going to talk about what key tasks not to waste your time on. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about a special offer I have for you today, okay? It took me five years to go from my side business, growing my side business, to full-time. And then another six years to go from full-time to where I am today. That is too long for you to wait. I do not want you to wait as long as I did. I want you to grow up much faster. My clients now are quitting their jobs in working with me for 90 days. They're quitting their jobs. Oh my gosh, I wish I had done that instead of spending five years in a job I hated. If you wanna go deeper and get help to guide you through this process of growing your business, what I have created is a self-study course just for you. It's called Get Traction on Your Passion. If you are open to doing the work and you're just not sure what you're missing, chances are if you knew what to do and you could have done it alone, you would have by now. That's where I was. That's what kept me stuck in that nine to five. You know you're smart. You know you're capable. You know you're independent and you're high achieving. And you're so ready to make this work for real this time. But... You're just not sure what you're missing. You're ready for clarity and how all of these pieces can work together for you. This is exactly why I have created Get Traction on Your Passion. Here is the link for you to go check it out. I'm also going to share this with you. Here we go. Can you see that? Get traction on your passion. This is for you if you're ready for clarity. If you're ready to feel like you are moving forward. If you're ready to know that you are focusing on the right things like we talked about, these exact tasks. If you're ready to go deeper with the information we've been talking about in this webinar. I talked a lot about this job that I hated. I talked a lot about my story, how I replaced my income in the first month. I talked about my daughter Maeve and how losing her is what got me to get fierce about creating the life I wanted and I learned to take inspired action. And so that's what this course teaches you how to do. It teaches you how to take inspired action. I created it for you after talking to women around the world about their struggles and what's holding them back. I took what I did to transform my life. I took what I did to help other women, my high-level private clients, to transform their life. And I created it into a six-module self-study course to break you out of the spin cycle, to provide major clarity, and to focus on what really matters in growing your business so you can enjoy your life. You can hear from some of the amazing women I've worked with and how I have helped them focus. You can expect focus, a renewed sense of peace and clarity to get over that fear, increase sales in your business to regain excitement and motivation to move forward. I outline the six modules here in detail, how to gain clarity on your true passion, to get clear on what's holding you back and why, so that you can go from fearful to focused, to clear the clutter in your head for maximum traction, to laser focus your action, to take it deeper, and to create your next right steps. 
These six modules total almost 100 pages of workbooks and information. It also includes eight audio trainings from me at this high level of energy for you to get pumped up. And today, only for the people who registered for this webinar, I'm offering it on half price for $97. On my website, anybody who's not on this webinar, it's $197 if you go to buy it. But when you click through today, it's $97. Bucks. You can grab it. $97 for the next 24 hours just for you. And I'm happy to answer any questions you want about it. All right. This is Get Traction on Your Passion. This is for you if you're ready to take this information deeper and get some help in implementing it for your business. $97. When you click and go to the cart, it will automatically show up as $97 for you for the next 24 hours. FAQs for you here. More information for you here. I invite you to trust your intuition if you're feeling called to this. Okay, everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of your fear. Your freedom is on the other side of your fear. And this is a way that I can help you for the course is valued at $497 for just $97 today. It contains everything you need to get started from exactly where you are and grow your business in a way that feels good and gets you results. All right, that's get traction on your passion. I'm going to stop screen sharing and I'm going to come back to you. The other thing that I want to mention is that maybe you're saying, you know, Christine, that's great, but I am really ready for high level support. I know I'm ready for a coach. I know I need a coach to kick me in the butt and to do those things that you were talking about, right? To call me out on stuff in a nice way, but in a truthful way, and also to help me get support consistently, accountability to make my dream come true. I'm ready. I have one spot in my high-level private mentorship before the price goes up. If you think that might be for you, I just want to mention it. It comes with some amazing bonuses, including a half-day intensive, which normally I charge $1,500 for, and a copy of Get Traction on Your Passion for free, and a double closing session. This might be for you. Today is October 1st. Can you believe it? So that means there are just 92 days left in the year. It's the start of the fourth quarter of the year. 90 days, which is exactly how long my private mentorship is, 90 days to change your life. 90 days to set you up for the best year of your life in 2017. One spot left at this price. I'm going to put the link in here so that you can check that out. If you think that might be for you, what I do to help you sort out if it's a good fit, if it's a good fit for me, if it's a good fit for you, because we're going to be working really closely together for 90 days, I do a free 30-minute what I call clarity call. It's no pressure. It's just a series of questions to help figure out if this is the right fit for you right now. To talk about where the money might come from, to talk about what kind of results you can expect to talk about your particular situation and if it's the right time for you. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can apply for a clarity call from this page that I just put in the comments. Okay, that's my high level 90 day mentorship. Significant investment, amazing results. Ready to change your life and set up 2017 to be your best year ever and to within just days or weeks of working with me, feel free, feel open, feel like your dream is possible again and get unstuck very, very quickly. Because again, my superpower is quickly helping you realize, recognize, realize, and step into the truth of who you were created to be. Not who someone else expects you to be, not who you've had to be for your job or your family, but who you were created to be. That's my calling. That's my gift, my God-given gift. All right. <clears throat> Finally, before we get to Q&A, what key tasks not to waste your time on when you're growing your business from scratch with limited time? 
Speaking of scratch, I feel like my throat's getting a little scratchy because I'm so excited. All right. What key tasks not to waste your time on? You're going to want to write this, these down. Number one, spending money on marketing. When you're first getting started, when you're first getting started growing your business from scratch, spending money on marketing, I do not recommend. Here's why. You don't know your audience well enough for that yet. You need to get real clarity on who you desire to work with, exactly who you desire to work with before you spend money to get in front of those people. And there's a lot that you can do that's going to create great insight for you and then create greater engagement. And it doesn't require you to spend money. So I don't recommend that you spend money on marketing at the beginning. It's a key task not to waste your time on. Number two, I recommend that you do not, a key task not to waste your time on is social media. Now, what do I mean by that? We talked a little bit about how I don't recommend you go real broad with your marketing earlier until, you know, until later. It's like the last exact task and system and structure to set up that I mentioned. But so many people spend time like scroll, scroll. I'm hitting the space bar, scroll, scroll, or on your phone, right? Scroll, scroll, scroll through social media, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. This is very distracting. And can I get an amen that it is a time suck? It also puts you into another key task not to waste your time on, which is what, which is looking at what others are doing. Looking at what others are doing. This is going to drain you. Rich says, yes, amen. Thank you. Looking at what others are doing. Both of these things are going to drain your energy and waste your time. We all have the same number of hours in the day. So where can you find yours? The other thing that I recommend that you do not waste your time on is anything that doesn't energize you. And that's different for every person. For me, I chose to do less socially when I was building my business in the beginning because I'm an introvert. So I have to protect that energy. I have to protect that time, right? It's really important. I chose to do less socially. So as an introvert, this worked for me. And I loved the work that I was doing, creating websites and writing and working with people to showcase their horses. So it made me happy to come home from work and do that or work on it on the weekends. It made me happy to use my vacation time to travel to see clients. It energized me. I was happy to take up some social time. Now, not all of it. I did not crawl into a cave. But I made the conscious decision to do less socially in order to build my business. So for you, what is it that drains you? What is it that gives you in, um, less energy? You need to give that up to build your business. Get a little fierce about this, okay? Now, I want you to start lining up those questions, either in the questions um, uh, tab or in the chat box so that I can start taking them because I'm going to wrap up and review this section of what key tasks not to waste your time on and then i'm ready to take your questions girlfriend so let's do this what key tasks not to waste your time on number one spending money on marketing you don't know your audience well enough yet for that use your time instead use what my dad calls sweat equity this is how i built my businesses from scratch to six figures and started them while I was still in my nine to five. I was not spending money on marketing. I was using sweat equity on the exact tasks that we've covered today and not on the tasks that I'm telling you to avoid. I also recommend that you not spend time on social media. It's going to drain you. It's going to make you depressed. It's going to make you feel like you're behind. It's going to suck up your time. Number three, I recommend you not look at what others are doing. Get your blinders on. Again, focus, focus, focus. If you need to unsubscribe from your competitors, do it. Whatever is draining you or making you feel less than or making you feel scared or anxious, get rid of it. Also, give up something that drains your energy. For me, it was doing less socially. For me, it was doing less socially. What is it for you? Those are the tasks 
not to waste your time on when you are growing your business from scratch with limited time. Now, I want to take your questions. I want to take your questions. So who has them? Questions about your specific business? Don't hesitate to ask. Questions about get traction on your passion. Questions about um, working with me privately. If you have a question, somebody else has the same question. So you're helping out not only yourself, but other people. And I love to answer your questions. It's like my favorite thing. So get them in, line them up. Let's do this. All right, I see one coming in from Kim. Kim says, in the past, when I spent a lot of time on social media, I started comparing and that made me feel bad and I didn't do anything. Exactly, exactly, yes. So that's a confirmation from Kim. Listen, there are studies out there, right? It makes us less happy in our life, makes us less happy in our relationships. Of course, it's gonna make us less happy in our business and drain us of energy. So do what you need to do to stay focused. Do what you need to do to pump yourself up and keep your why in front of you. Keep your why in front of you. Have I done such a good job going over this content that you don't have any questions? I'll give you a little bit of time to put them in. I know that was a lot of information. Okay, Marilyn, question. Do you think it's possible to earn $2,000 a month if you have a business other than coaching? That's a great question. Marilyn, I love that question. Thank you for asking it. Yes, yes I do is the answer. Because listen, when I started my website business, which had nothing to do with coaching, wasn't even on my radar at the time, 11 years ago, I was making more than $2,000 a month. And remember, I was not a web designer, a graphic designer. I was not a coder. I was a very unlikely web site creator. So if I can do that without the uh, skills that pretty much everyone says you need to be successful, then you can too in a different industry. Because what I did was I leveraged what I was good at. I was really good at relationships. I was really good at writing. I was really passionate about horses. And there's a very unique skill set for you just like that. Just like that. Just waiting to be discovered. And I can help you with that. I can help you laser focus in on that really fast. Great question. If you have a follow-up, type it in. Uh, Sarah says, I have a question around time tracking. How do we know how much time is too much time to spend on a task? I spent six hours today writing an article to share with my client, but now I'm wondering how on earth I can be efficient long-term with this. That's a great question, Sarah. That's a great question. First of all, we have to find out how much time it, it takes for us to do something before we can decide if it's too much time. So you did not make a mistake by doing that. There's no mistake by doing that. All right. Um, so give yourself that permission and also give yourself the permission that now that you've created a piece of content, there are a million ways you could use it. So maybe you created it for that one person, but now you can repurpose it. You can make a live video out of it. You could publish it to your blog. You can publish it, submit it um, to get published on a website. You know, I have found so much, um, I've been able to support so many more people by, by repurposing content. Um, and so we could go into that a little bit deeper. Um, if you want, uh, you can ask more questions, but that's a high level overview. Um, you first have to know how much time, because you may find that next time you write an article, it's much faster. So you might need to repeat that task, first of all. And then second of all, you do want to have some kind of a value on your time to help you decide if it's worth it. Generally, I recommend starting with what you're making in your job. So um, the, the quick way to figure that out is to look at what you make a year. So if you make um, $50,000 in a year, divide that in half, you make about $25 an hour. So if you spent six hours on that task, then you um, would have, um, you're going to have to help me do the math now. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I'm not, not my strong suit. 25 times six is what, 150? So you spend about $150 if you were worth $25 an hour in your full-time job. 
It's a great question. You have to start tracking your time to figure out if it's worthwhile. But I would say it sounds like you did the right thing today, Sarah, and now you've got a content piece you can reuse everywhere. So great job. Congratulations. Rachel says, I have so many plans, ideas I know will work. I need someone to make me focus on one thing, which would be best. I love your passion. Yes, exactly. That's why I'm a focused strategist, Rachel, because I get it. Because for so long, I did a million different things and tried them all and didn't get traction on any of them. So if you want to talk, apply for that clarity call with me. Maybe that last spot is for you. It is amazing how quickly you can get focused. And listen, most of us are multi-passionate people. We do not have to give up the other things that we love. This is just about focusing on what's the best thing for you to focus on today so that you can create space in your life for all the other stuff that you want to do because it will all come together. Look, look at me now. I run life with passion. I have a horse breeding business that other people run for me. I um, have a nonprofit that I started with my husband and I get to speak for that, you know, speak at that and be visible for that and raise awareness for that. But I didn't start all of these at the exact same time. I had to focus in order to get traction and make money to support the other things that I was doing. So yes, you have to focus. And your instinct, your intuition is right on. If you are feeling, I'm big on intuition, I'm big on your gut. If you're feeling like your intuition is telling you maybe we're a good fit together, I'd love to talk to you about that. But I totally agree with you. And I'm right there with you. So many plans, ideas I know will work. I've got a million plans, but right now I'm focused. I'm focused on the things that are the right steps for me. And that's what I help my clients do. Laura asks, what did you use to create the websites you sold without coding? So this was years ago, Laura. Um, I used WordPress. I used WordPress. I also hired coders when I needed to. Um, but I used WordPress. I still use WordPress for some things. I also love Squarespace, which is what my website, lifewithpassion.com, is created in. I love Squarespace. It's only been around a few years. But it's a great site and it's very inexpensive and it's very DIY. And to me, it's much easier to use if you don't know anything about websites than WordPress is. But there are a lot of free tutorials for you out there on both of them, a ton of free support. However, just because I did websites doesn't mean you need to do websites, right? Only do websites if that's something that you're excited about doing. Okay? Let me know if you have follow up questions. Sarah and Laura say, thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thank you. Great question. Sandra, my goal for the past three years has been to write a book. I know that my book would be a great success, but I don't know where to start. I have so many ideas. I'm not confident to know where to begin this journey. Yes, Sandra, thank you for bringing this up because confidence and focus go hand in hand. Like if we don't have confidence, then we're not going to be focused. We're going to be all over the place because we have to have this self-belief that what we're working on right now is the right thing, right? And so it's kind of like this catch-22, like the cycle, right? And then the cycle starts becoming a downward spiral meow, 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 until we're like, oh, it's never going to happen. It hasn't happened yet, so it's not going to happen. So what's the point? But then we're like, but I know it could be great. I know this is what I'm called to do, right? I get that. The women I work with struggle with self-doubt and self-belief, and that's what's kept them stuck. And so a lot of what the work that I do, in addition to obviously being able to teach you how to structure a business and grow it from scratch, is on your self-confidence, on your self-belief, because it goes hand in hand with focus, focusing on the right things and growing that business. I know that you have a lot of great ideas, and I believe they're God-given. So having, I've got to tell you that what changed for me was having high level accountability and support. Having somebody who I had invested in, who I believed could help me, that's the biggest key factor when you're choosing someone to work with. Do you believe they can help you? If so, then you find a way to work with them. Found someone to help me and I hired them and then I let them kick my butt and I knew every week they were going to kick my butt. And they helped me focus on what I had to work on that week. And then I had accountability. And if I had questions, I could go to them and all of that stuff. 
Okay. Let me know if you have questions about that, Sandra, but I hear you and I understand. I understand. Kim says, Christine, I was told the other day from another horse business owner that it's really tough now to make it in the horse world. And they suggested I find something else to do. What are your thoughts? Kim? That, is that person struggling? Okay. So that's their reality because our thoughts and our words create our reality. My question for you is, is there somebody else, another horse business owner, who's being successful out there? If the, if the answer is yes, then that means that's possible for you. So the truth is that, yes, either of them are possible. Do I know people who are in the horse business who are successful right now? Yes. Do I know people who find it very tough to make it in the horse world right now? And they believe that and that continues to be true? Yes. So I think you've got to check in and decide what do you believe? Because that's what's going to be true going forward. And whatever you believe, you create more of. So if you believe it's going to be hard, it's going to continue to be hard. I know that sounds simple, but it's very, very true. I see it over and over. And Kim says, I agree. Awesome. Kim also they started helping people with technical stuff on the side until I get my horse business going. Can you suggest places for me to get the word out? Kim, that totally depends on what you're doing and who your niche is. You go to where your people are. You go to where your people are. And really, you only need a couple of people. Like I said, I work on one to two projects at a time on one to two key tasks. My sense for you is that you need to niche down and go to where those people are and show them the value of what you have to offer. Okay, cool. Marilyn, when you private coach, are you available? I got that, Marilyn. As time goes on and your client has new questions, obstacles, or challenges, yes. I form relationships with my clients that go far beyond the coaching relationship. Now, in terms of needing high level support, right, that comes in terms of a package. But checking in, this is one of the reasons that I provide so much free support, like in my Facebook group, right? I really believe that we're all here to help encourage each other. And there's a reason that my web clients, when they started working with me, they stayed with me for years, some for a decade. and this is because my strength is connecting and forming relationships. So I do not just disappear and stop talking to you once the relationship is over. And I'm, all, I'm always working on new things to help you stay supported. And my goal for you is not that you, you know, become long-term dependent on me, but that you um, learn your strengths and, of course, continue to use me as you need, but that you are also able to grow and grow your business. And maybe we continue working together in the future. Maybe there's somebody who becomes a better fit for you as you grow. My goal for you is that the money that you invest with me, you get back because you've earned it in your business. This is not just a, you know, sinking pit, a hole. It's you spend the money to make back the money and then some. That's the goal of, should be the goal of any coach any mentor to work with you. Um, yeah. And so Marilyn, it totally depends on what your needs are. You know, are you in a place where you just need to check in every once in a while after our 90 days together are up? Are you in a place where you want email support? You email me every day. It totally depends on what you need as to how to structure that. But I always make myself available because I believe we work with the people we're called to work with and we're meant to work with. And so that is part of my commitment to you. Yeah. Marilyn says, awesome, awesome sauce. I don't know why I just did that. It's a little out of control. It's because I love it. It's because I love being here answering your questions. Laura says, I tend to overanalyze and see that my ideas will not work before I ever start them. Yep, yep. How can you tell when you're working from a lack of confidence and abundance of fear versus actual real concerns that should stop you? I want my business idea to work, but I don't know if the lack of feasibility I feel is real. Okay, great. Laura, I'm just going to be a little blunt with you here, okay? As long as you stay in your head and try to do this on your own, it's not going to work. And I say that with love because that's where I was. Because for a lot of years, I told myself, I'm smart. I should be able to figure this out. But you have got to have somebody outside your head to go there with you, to go there deep with you 
and to sort this through. That is the bottom line. When you're dealing with overanalyzation and an abundance of fear, as you so aptly put it, you have got to get support to deal with that or you're going to keep yourself stuck. Because here's the truth. You've been in this cycle so long that if you knew what to do, you would have done it already. And this is not a quick fix because if it was, you would have done it already. All right? That's the truth. That's the best answer I can give you. And it's not because I want you to sign up and work with me. Like I said, I believe that we're all, we all work with the right people at the right time. This is not a sales pitch. This is my heart for you and what I've learned watching women struggle with fear and struggling with it myself for years. You've got to go deep. You've got to go deep. You've got to get the support. You've got to get real. You've got to hire somebody who has been where you've been and can help you sort it through. Okay. Sandra says, thank you, love your passion. Woohoo! There's a reason my business is called Life with Passion, right? Kim says, thanks, Christine. Kim says, I can totally relate to what you said, Laura. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are connecting. Sandra says, did you take a coaching course? If so, which one? Yeah, Sandra, I've taken many. I've taken many. I believe highly in the power of um, in the power of continuing to up level and continuing to work with people who you feel called to along the way. I believe every coach needs a coach because that is how we continue to get better. And that's how I continue to serve my clients. So I'm not here to talk about the ones that I've taken. In fact, some of them aren't even offered anymore. I've been studying for a long time with different, very, very high level mentors, the best ones I could find so that I can make myself take the things I've learned and make myself a better coach. Yep. Marilyn says, I firmly believe you need to surround yourself with positive people who will support and encourage and not give you all the reasons you would succeed. Oh my gosh, it's so true. That is why I don't allow whining in my Facebook group, Life with Passion Society. And in fact, I'm going to put a link here in case any of you aren't in there. You can jump on in. No whining, no complaining. You have a question, you're allowed to have a bad day, but you need to have a question. You need to sort that through and not just come with your negative, you know, negativity. How do I snap myself out of it is a great question, right? You can just add that question on at the end, but no whining. Because listen, I have been in a really negative place. I know a lot of people who keep themselves stuck by telling themselves a story about how they're afraid and how they're stuck and how it's never going to work for them and how it's too hard and how there's already too many people doing it out there and how there's competition and blah, 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 blah. Great. If that's what you believe, it's going to continue to be true. If you surround yourself with people who are out there doing it and making it work and getting momentum and getting traction, guess what you're going to find? You're going to find that you believe it's true, and then it will be. So I totally agree with you, Marilyn. Totally agree with you. And, you know, if you had said this to me a few years ago, I would have said that's crazy and it's not true. But the truth is that I realized I had a choice in how I was going to think when Maeve died. I realized that when my daughter died, I could. I could, and I could have, go lock myself in my bedroom and only open it up for people to bring me more cases of wine. I realized I had that choice. I'm just going to be totally honest. But I also realized that it wasn't worth my fear. If I was going to, if I wasn't going to do the whole wine thing, living in my bedroom with wine in fat pants and a robe for the rest of my life, then I wasn't going to just be mediocre either. I was going to try this thing. I was going to try to change my thoughts and see if it worked. And I can tell you a year and a half later that hell yes, it has a thousand percent. So that's what I want for each one of you. Laura says, thanks, Christine. You know, I would love to work with you. Awesome. Laura, if that's true, you make it a non-negotiable. You figure out a way to make it happen. I'm here for you. And I'd love to talk with you about it. Figure out a way to make it happen. People get creative all the time. And you may have heard me say this before, but instead of telling yourself, I can't afford it, I can't afford it, I can't afford it, start asking, how can I? How can I afford it? I have seen people have money miracles by asking that question. Finding money, finding ways, something they didn't think of, you know, and finding a way to invest in themselves, knowing it's going to come back because they're investing in a business, right? And how much money did you spend to go to school? How much money did you borrow? Student loans. We do that 
without thinking, it's accepted in our society, and then we get out of school and we still don't know what we're gonna do, right? Still don't know what we're gonna do. So in comparison, this is a fraction of the amount to change your life in 90 days. That's why I'm so passionate about it, because I know what it's done for me, I know what it's done for my clients, know what it can do for you. Victoria, I have many ideas for businesses I love. I'm confident any one of them would be successful. On the other hand, I've done many things after doing them. I find is not um, really what I want to do. They're just not meant for me. Yes, finding out what you don't want to do is just as valuable, Victoria. If you have a question there, uh, make sure you ask it and follow up. But I totally agree. I found that in my business. I found that in my clients. That's why clarity comes from trying things out, not from thinking about it. you got to try stuff out and the information that you get from trying things will lead you closer and closer and closer to, until every day so that every day you're doing more things you love and less things you don't. All right, Heather, I'm going to skim this because yes, it is so long. Um, I'm a pastry chef. I'm own home-based bakery. Um, put my business on hold. Settle in Morocco. Um, haven't done much with baking. Pregnant, moving home soon, providing my own business, selling people physical products to eat. I want to know how I can expand, not have to rely on being in the kitchen, make a physical product. Yeah, live in a small market. Um, lots of ideas. I don't know where how to start. Any things can work to make a good income. Um, yeah, I agree with you. It sounds like, you know, when you moved away and you traveled and you did these things, right, you lost momentum and that's normal. That happens. Um, building your momentum um, back from scratch, agreed. Um, that, you know, looking at a an online-based business is what I recommend for you. Um, I would definitely go back and look at how I, um, watch the replay of how I quit my nine to five because, because I talk there about how I replace my income in the first month and so how you can very quickly replace your income in the first month and, um, and that sounds like it's what you, you know, your desire is when you move back. And so, first of all, congratulations on your pregnancy. Amazing. Um, and that's really exciting. So you're moving back. So you have a fresh start. So I would recommend that you look at creating a business online because your market is so much bigger. That's what I help my clients do. And it sounds like you have a lot of skills. And so you do need to narrow down and focus. You do need to narrow down and focus. So here's the one thing that I'll say today in answer to your question quickly is that you need to check in and see what you're most excited about doing today or first, and then you do that. Get traction on your passion leads you through that in a more in-depth process so that you can kind of get out of your head and all these crazy swirling ideas and decide exactly your next best step. So that may be a really good fit for you right now, depending on how intense, you know, you, how deep you want to go. This may be a really good time for you to think about getting mentorship um, with me or with somebody else to help you get those systems and structures as you um, move back and get clear on what you need and get focused. Two different options for you, two very different price points. But the first thing that I would do totally free is take some time to check in and say, what is my desire for the next thing to do. One thing, what is the one thing I'm most excited to do right now? And I would do it because there are a million things you could do, but your intuition is good. And I believe very strongly in our gut. And so I would ask what one thing am I most excited about doing first? And I would go do that and know that you have me and you have get traction on your passion and you have other things to support you in that focus. Should you desire? I hope that helps. All right, I'm gonna give you about another 30 seconds um, before I wrap up to see if we've got any other questions. You guys have asked amazing questions today. I am so glad that you have opened up and have shared with the other amazing women from around the world on this call. Again, I wanna give you the links for the two programs that we talked about, Get Traction on Your Passion, which is $97 half off for the next 24 hours just for you all for signing up today I and for showing up powerfully and live and asking such incredible questions. You also know that you have, I have one spot left in this mentorship. If you're feeling like that's for you, 
get your application in. It is by application only because I only work with women. I believe I can really, really help. And I'll tell you if I don't think I can. Because it's a lot of energy we're both going to be investing. And I really believe in integrity. And if you can't tell, I'm just a pretty genuine person, right? So um, those are the two things that we discussed today. And I just, again, want to thank you and congratulate you for showing up. This is a very powerful thing that you've done for yourself. To show up in such a big way. To show up for yourself, for your dreams, for your business really excited and honored that you spent this time with me. I trust that you got what you needed out of it and that what is going to support you is going to stick and that you are going to spend the rest of the day, the night, whatever, from wherever and whenever you're watching this, you're going to take what you needed and you're going to implement it and you're going to go and improve your life, your business, wherever you are right now because you spent this time with me today. I'm Christine McAllister. I'm the founder of Life with Passion. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to connecting with you soon. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.